Ash Te Humchi, Smoke Keru, Seo Keftaf, Kurupa in a bar, or in Adi Sot Sabau, a rupu in a term to Keftan Nevacher, Kurupa in Se Had Jerem Jeritu, and Trap Tapnate to Ente Huti, Dwam Unite, Pai Banitu, Herbanitu. In Trap Ten, Animal Spirits of the Bagua, the I Ching, Chien, Kung, Chen, Sun, Li, Ka. Tui, Ken, Dwa, Dao. And it's our ten, animal spirits of the tarot. Dwa, for the air. Dwa, for the earth. Dwa, for the fire. Dwa, for the water. Dwa, for the air. Okay. Okay. Peace, peace, my peaceful people. What's good? It's your brother, man, say I knew. Back again. This is for my April Taurus, my Taurus folks, in the month of April. Peace y'all, how y'all doing? Nice to be back. Slightly different situation. Uh, I think next week, I was trying to actually get out into the, uh, you know, down by the uh, river. And uh, you know how I do, I'm in the nature boy situation. Um, but yeah, I wasn't able to get out there, it was still too cold, so, you know, Mother Nature ain't ready for me yet, but, uh, you know, we'll be out there. Alright, so here we go, Taurus, uh, this is for you, my sun, moon, rising sign, my north node, folks, uh, where Taurus is heavy, okay? We're going to do the spiritual reading for the cycle. Uh, remember, it's a general reading, you know, so, you know, this is a spiritual, things is going to take a snapshot of the spirit. And find out what's going on there, right? Um, again, general. So this is going to resonate with some of you. Um, some of you, it's going to resonate powerfully. Some of you, maybe just a little bit, right? Get yourself a reading, right? Personalized reading, and we will, you know, get into the details for you and break it down. Okay. All right. With that said, let's go in. Okay, what is the major spiritual focus for Matarians during the month of Abra? Okay, or set to my eye. Or set to my eye. Nekabet to Chas. Okay. All set to my Nekabet was to Chas. Okay. Set to my eye, nigga bet to chas. Y'all love my handwriting. Alright. Okay, so. Okay, so what are we talking about? First thing that jumps up in this reading is psychicism. Our set is the water. Right? And water is the most receptive medium that we have here on earth. Okay, so. In charts where there is a lot of water, there tends to be psychicism. You're looking at a chart like that right now, right? I got Scorpio sun sign. Scorpio is in the water, hot water. I got Pisces moon sign, so Pisces is in the water, right? So my person tends to be a little bit psychic, you know. That, that happens. It's actually, you know, it happens. I um, can pick up on things, you know. And again, it's the, it's the, the water, right? The water makes you receptive. Sometimes you can pick up on people's thoughts. You know, sometimes you think in thoughts and you think they're your own. That's why it's, it's very important to cultivate a mindfulness meditation, especially when you, you know, have empathic stuff or you're psychic or whatever like that. Um, you know, it's important uh, because you have to, you know, separate your thoughts from the other thoughts that are streaming in. You know, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting when you realize you can do that, but that that can be done. 
But um, but yeah, so so that's what I'm looking at here. Nekebet is the cool side of psychic energy, right? So you have Yjet at the hot polarity, you have Nekebet at the cool polarity. Nekebet is the polarity of, you know, kind of the internal psychical realm, right? Where you know there's intuition, there is tele telepathy, telepathy. Um, you know, there is. You know, um, deep thoughts. Also, with, with something like this, our set with a neck of bet, watch out for daydreaming. You know, watch out for not being focused in your thoughts. Because our set has a tendency to be watery, right? It was, you know, watery. If your water is not grounded, you're going to be on your ding to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, be mindful of the tendency to kind of drift in mental wanderings, right? Um, okay, let's see, all set, what else can we go with this? Um, motherhood, uh, something comes about motherhood and about uh, taking care. You know, naked bet can sometimes be a negative, um, uh, 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 a negative, uh, thing on the life force, right, a super in imposition on the life force that drains you, that neck of bet energy can be draining, so, you know, many times you see a neck of bet and it's a call to where is your vitality at, you know, what, you know, are you depressed in your, vi is your vitality depressed, um, you know, yeah, so this is a, this is a, it's good, you know, in some cases this is what that's going to be. Right? You know, you have an offset thing, you might be watery, and it might have the tendency to make you lazy or to make you subdued in your life force. So you have to do Heru rituals, you have to, you know, chant the Heru, you have to do Heru work, you know, uh, 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 stuff, like working out. Right? Heru uh, is going to, you know, be those exercises that work your cardio, work your ability to stay, stamina, um, you know. You know, your general vitality is what Heru is. So you see Nega Bet on the table, always look out for where that could affect your vitality. All right, Heru. Okay? All right, so again, yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm seeing here. Let us do an I Ching reading. Let's see if we can hone it in some more. Open. Close stress. Open, close stress, open stress. Close stress, open, close stress, open, close, close stress, open, close. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got the 64 into the 52. Can you see that? All right. 64. With lines two, three, and four stressed into the five, two. Okay, sixty-four before completion. All right, sixty-two. I mean, that second line is telling you to slow down. Second line, I mean, the third line is saying, "Don't jump out the boat till you finish the situation." So you cross the river. Right? Don't jump out the boat till you cross the river, which translates to. Don't finish until you complete the situation. All right, and that fourth line. Fourth line is fighting with with uh, stuff, so, and, you know, people, somebody. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What do we got here? We got line two. He breaks his wills. Firmness and correctness bring good fortune. Line two is strong, but since it isn't in the wrong place, this person should proceed slowly and carefully, following the right courses and thereby bringing matters gra to gradually to completion. Thus he will attain good fortune. The results that these individuals achieve will be by no means outstanding, yet they will be capable and intelligent persons, respected in their chosen professions and in their personal lives. Right? For the most suspicious, he should be genteel. Sincere and reverent in all his thoughts, words, and deeds. Fate will circumscribe his activities and achievements, but he will be respected by others and will have many friends. 
he will be content with modest accomplishments in both his professional and personal life. For the least auspicious, he, he also will be reverent, harmonious, and a likable person who follows the golden mean. He will avoid arguments whenever possible. He will have only modest achievements, but no shortage of mental essentials. All right? Let's see. For the official or officer, he will overcome a major handicap or difficulty and win favor. For business and professional, efforts towards advancement will be largely blocked. And for ordinary people, he should follow established patterns for best results and wait for a better time to try progress. Troubles will readily develop if he succumbs to rash ideas. <clears throat> right. So, you know, yeah, a lot was, eh, not much was actually said here. I don't have my good books right with me uh, that really get more into the meat on this. But, you know, just taken from the opening line, we know he breaks his wheels, right? Breaking the wheels is slowing down. It's just simply saying that, you know, this person is going too fast for the circumstance. You know, he needs to chill out. Firmness and correctness is good fortune, right? Just to kind of, uh, you know, hone in the idea of, you know, putting a stop on something. What are you, you know, you're limiting something when you're being firm. You're being firm with someone, what are you doing? You're like, you know, limiting them. You're like putting them right, <laughs> you know. Okay, all right, so let's see. Third line, situation has not been fully and correctly prepared. Advancing brings misfortune, advantageous to cross the great stream. <clears throat> All right, so we're talking about already a situation has not been fully and correctly prepared. So what happens, you start on a project and you're not prepared. You know, you, you know, say you go to the river to do some videos, but you forgot your um, jacket and now it's cold. <laughs> You know, or you forgot your, uh, um, what is this thing called? Um, oh man, you think I know this off the top. Uh, I can't think of the word right now that this thing's standing on. But you forgot that thing. Well, what's going to happen is you got to go back. You're going to have to go back and get it, go back another day, whatever the case. You're not going to be able to do it. Okay. Um, so this is what we have here. Right? The third line. You know, you're, you know, you gotta, you gotta stop something and restart. Let's see. The position, this is right. The position of line three is such that although matters have partially developed, an incorrect start has been made. Continuing on the present path will lead to misfortune. It would be better and definitely advantageous to start again, following the correct principles and with adequate and worthy cooperation from others, by no means of which any enterprise can be accomplished. A few of these individuals will learn quickly exactly what needs to be done for success, but they will be hesitant to put their newfound theories into practice. The rest will continually make mistakes. All right. So, right. So again, we're talking about you know um, a situation that hasn't been fully prepared. So you have to back out of it, right, for the time. You have to retreat for now and come back prepared and do it right. You know, a situation that you start, but you got to stop. Um, right. right. The fourth line, persistence brings good fortune. Regrets disappear. He energizes his resources against the devil's country. After three years, rewards are bestowed. So this is a circumstance where you're fighting with something in your spirit. Right? Could be also, you know, in certain situations, this is going to point you to a conflict that you're having with someone else. Um, but it's, it's, it, it likens the situation to the devil's country, right? What is the devil's country? The devil's co country is where something decadent is going on, or at least something that's not quite along the lines of your program, right? So if, you know, your devil country could be that you exist in a group where everybody's smoking, but you don't want to smoke, or, you know. So now everybody's smoking and you're there, you're in the devil's country. You know, you have to, you know, you have to marshal your energies and resources, right? After three years, great, great rewards are bestowed, right? Basically, it's, it's, you know, it's a circumstance where, you know, you're, you're in a challenge. You're in a challenge. You're in something that you have to kind of like take by the horns and have as a challenge, right? 
um, after three years, res uh, rewards are bestowed. But like I said, like this could be a persistent argument that you have with a relative, and you on your way to over there. Um, this could be, you know, you know, a boss who's a little too bossy. You know, things like that. Like um, this could be a lot of things. Right? So you want to look out for that type of circumstance where, you know, you have uh, maybe maybe it's a weakness that you have. You know, maybe it's a weakness that you have that you have to correct, right? The devil's country. You're in the devil's country. What you going to do in the devil's country? You're going to work to fix, you know, the devil. You know, you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? That's what we come here to do. You know, human beings come to earth to beat the devil up. The devil inside. So, there we go. Ah, oh, wow. You know what? I just thought of a circumstance that I was made aware of where, interesting, where uh, there's a person who's a, Satanist or a devil worshiper, uh, and the individual involved with this individual is a Taurus moon sign. So, so this is interesting. And so, just by chance, say I was talking to that those individuals or that individual, right? You have the devil's country, right? You have an, um, jumping out of the river before the boat. You have all these things in the 64 going into the 52, right? The 52 is what? Keeping still. Keeping still. So, you know, somewhere you have to keep still where it regards the 64. This could be the devil himself. <laughs> this could be the devil. You got to go in the devil's country. It could be you have a relationship with a devil or someone who's not good, cool. And for some reason, you got to be there. Maybe you're pregnant. Could be pregnant. Um, you know? But it's 52. It goes into the 52, so it stands still. It's, you know, um, something that gets either stopped or needs to be. Right? So, hmm, yeah. I don't know. And it was interesting. I just, we just got a dark disease in the Aries, uh, for the Aries thing. Aries reading, it was a dark deceased reading, it was a Heteru situation, right, Heteru 10 came up, you know, um, yeah, you know, perhaps, you know, that is a circumstance where that individual is acting like a dark deceased, I can see that, you know, because that, you know, I, I can see these two readings that I did for Aries and Taurus, I can see these two being connected, um, you know, for at least an individual, right, you know, um, if you see this, then, you know, take heed, you know, go back and look at the Aries video and see how that applies. See if anything in there applies. All right. All right. Other than that, you know, this is the reading for everybody else. All right. I'll set two Ma'at, make a bet two Chas. Remember, stay awake with this Ma'at, I'll set two, uh, two, make a bet two. Stay awake. This is a hexagram where you can fall asleep. You know, hexagram, this is all about trance. Both of these are trance things. So don't be in trance, like, you know, out here, right? Um, you know, you got to go into the devil's country. Don't be in trance. You know, the devil will F you up. Right? Okay, so I'm going to leave that there, right? I'm going to leave that there for specifics. Get with me at the email, and we will arrange a reading for you. Okay. Now, um, that's everything. And I'm going to say peace and love to my Taurus, and we're going to get back next time. Peace.